Um, I'm Ruth, and I'm involved in Azalea, which is a ministry that works with women and girls caught in sexual exploitation in Luton and around the world. We're expanding to various areas of the globe, but I'll talk about that later. I'd love to take you into a person's life that we're involved in just now and in her family, not actually in her because she's dead. Um, her name is Nelly, that's her pseudonym. Azalea has been involved in 176 women since we've been involved, since we've started in Luton, which doesn't sound very many, but it does sound like too many, doesn't it? But those women come from families, and those women are part of a wider community. And if you can imagine how many men have access to women for violence and sex, and also try and imagine how many people have been affected by sexual exploitation who live in the areas where the women work. We're talking thousands and thousands of people. So when we talk about revival in a town, in a city, or in a village, to really see all, all the issues around sexual exploitation really challenged and redeemed, we're very near to revival. We're very near to people really understanding what the deep love of God means. So that's exciting, isn't it? So to really see what God can do in Luton and the expanse of that, we really need to see sexual exploitation challenged because there's nowhere that God cannot go. He can go everywhere and he can redeem and he can change and he can transform. Nellie um, is a girl that we've been involved in for about four years. She's been prayed for consistently in our prayer net, um, which comes out every Friday, and that people all over the world pray for those women and pray for other challenges that Azalea is involved with. Um, and there's at least five people I know who regularly fasted and prayed for Nellie to come into a deeper relationship with God. Um, she was sexually exploited since she was five years old by an uncle. She didn't have the capacity to be able to talk about that. As one can imagine, that's quite difficult at five. Um, all the women we work with have all been sexually abused and have all began child sexual exploitation as children. Um, and that's really fundamental that we grasp that. When somebody is sexually abused, they freeze emotionally. So their capacity to respond is stuck in that age group. So I try and look for the age they were, they were sexually abused, the age when they started drug abuse, which is an emotional painkiller to numb that pain out. And you're roughly working with a person in the middle. So on the whole, we minister to people who are between the ages of 8 and 10 years old. That is their emotional framework. Within that, we can see that God can bring change and transformation and healing. Because when people are still alive, there's still hope. So we got to know Nellie. We discovered that she had a cousin who was a Christian. And I'm really keen to find out people who have somebody in their family who really, really prays for them. Because that is, you feel that you're an answer to somebody else's prayer, and there's a whole history of heaven. Uh, I used to work in Glasgow and involved in a very similar project to Azalea. And I was so confused because we went out on outreach and we saw people saved straight away and just God's redeeming love. And I was saying, what's going on here? We're going into dark places and we're seeing such a response to the Holy Spirit and what God wants to do. And then I discovered there was a group, listen to this, I think it's incredible, a group of ladies who met for eight years on a Tuesday afternoon between 2 and 4 p.m. and prayed for the women caught in sexual exploitation in the Gorbals. Isn't that amazing? They didn't know anything about anything we did. And they did this for years and years before we actually came. So they had no idea that these plans were in formation or anything like that. Isn't that incredible? So we, we absolutely came in and reaped what we didn't sow in any shape or form. But with Nellie, she had this cousin that really prayed. Uh, she was very heavily pimped and she was very heavily um, involved in the drugs culture. And I personally had been to see her in hospital four times uh, it, over, the, over the process of 18 months. I just want to really important that I'm accurate. Yeah, it's over the process of 18 months where she'd been a victim of violence um, and had been beaten up so incredibly badly. Um, and it was very sad to see her in such a traumatized physical state of, dis of huge suffering. She left, she began a relationship with God, 
she had connected with a really good church and had started a new life and was happy because she knew that Jesus loved her and changed her mindset. And it was fantastic to see her as a very different person. Um, all her life, she struggled very deeply with asthma. And she died of a severe asthma attack uh, in the end. But something can I say, whatever troubles we're going through in life, and I believe this so passionately, our life on earth is this small. And I can remember saying this to Nellie really clearly at the hospital, sitting on her bed and saying, your life is so short, it's this big, but your life in heaven is that big. So what happens with this little bit, even if it's full of suffering, is very insignificant compared to all this. And trying to tell a woman that who's been beat up, beaten up so many times, she can't remember how many times she's been in hospital due to violence, she really got it and she really understood and I, it's one of the most challenging times I've had in my life because I thought, who do I think I am when I have burdens that I carry around inside me? And if I compare myself to Nellie and I think she's got that, why can't I get that, Ruth? Why can't I grasp the importance and significance of heaven in our lives and what it means to be really touched by God and to really grasp and really believe that gift of faith? Um, and it's wonderful to see how she was changed and transformed by God. But it's hard, isn't it? She was only 28 when she died. But she has an amazing eternity with our loving Father. Okay. Right, could I have four volunteers, please? I need one, one needs to be a man. That would be great. Right. Okay, we're moving quickly here. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, thank you. What's your name? Hello. Hello. Okay, that's great. Hello. <laughs> okay. Right. That's great. Three other women? Three women, rather? Thank you. If I put this just here, that's perfect. And put you there. That's great. Thank you. Yeah, right there. That's where you are. Right here. Hi. I'm What's your name? Sandra. Sandra. Let's have yeah. a seat. Uh, two other people? Thanks, Sarah. Okay. If you have a seat, that'd be lovely. Who's Betty? All right, Betty, that's it. Sorry, you're chosen. I'm just trying to think which one. Who's the driver here? Is it you, Sandra? You're the driver. Oh, you are? Yeah, we're not in America, are we, dear? No! <laughs> there we go. If I can give you these, that's great. Sandra, could we have you here? No, it's not Sandra, sorry, Betty. Getting all confused. Right, Betty, let's have you here. If you can stand, that'd be lovely. <laughs> Come and stand about here. Okay. That's great. These look good, but not as good as the azalea cakes, I quickly add. There we go. I'll give this to you, Sandra. Right. I think you're imagining what we're doing here. <laughs> this is the car. Sarah's our driver. Right, okay, so we're driving along. We're on outreach. We go on outreach twice a week, and sometimes, if we can, we go three times a week. So we go on outreach. Our drop-in is open at exactly the same time, and you'll see a clip about that straight after this. So Sarah's driving along, and she spots Betty. Okay, this is Betty. Okay, so Betty comes over to the car. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do that. <laughs> right, okay. <laughs> Actually, let's, let's just change a slight... No, let's keep you there. Let's keep okay. you there, because that's often what happens. It, it would be easier, logistically, if we had you Sandra's end, but it just... It's chaos. So anyway, you're not there. So Sarah's rolled down the window. Okay, and Sandra sees Betty. It's the first time we've met Betty. So we explain what Azalea is and why we do it. The reason for that is when Betty started sexual exploitation, a pimp didn't come up to her and say, I'm going to wreck your life, I'm going to introduce you to drugs, I'm going to rape you, I'm going to ask my friends to rape you, and I'm going to put you out on the streets. It's not that honest, okay? It's coercion, it's grooming. So because of that, we want to have integrity, we want to say who we are. 
rather than pretend to be somebody else. We want to have full integrity. This is who we are, and this is why we're doing it. We, want them to, we desperately want them to understand the gospel, but we want them to have integrity. We want, we want to have integrity, and for them to understand why we're here, and so we can build on trust, because they've been absolutely lied to. Okay. Who can remember what they wanted to do when they were 14? Any ideas? Martin, what did you want to do? Oh, isn't that sweet? <laughs> That's lovely. Right, okay, others? What did you want to do when you were 14? You wanted to be a hairdresser. Oh, it's lovely, Jackie. Oh. Anybody else? Yep. Pardon? A journalist. A journalist. Oh, that's gorgeous. Such diversity. But I'm sure Betty didn't want to land up on the streets. Okay, that wasn't her dream. Okay. So you imagine something's gone wrong, hasn't it, here? So that's why it's so important that we're honest. So Sandra, mm-hmm. Sarah's, Sarah's round down the window shenanigans and Sandra said to Betty thank you so much for coming over to the car we really believe God loves you just the way you are you do not need to change to be loved by God he loves you he died for you as you are you come as you are and there's no difference in between myself and I'm Sandra by the way or Sarah and if there's any difference it is the grace of God that has brought that change in our lives because he we believe that God loves us and that he wants to take us out of sin and he wants to take us out of anything that separates us from the love of God. And when God made you, Betty, he didn't make you for this. He made you for something better than this. I, I love the Bible, don't you? It's an amazing book. And one of the lines that I love from it was when a woman who'd been bleeding for 38 years, Jesus asks, her, which is the craziest of questions. Do you want to be healed? I mean, Duh. of course you want to be healed, but is it? You know, are we safe and secure in our comforts, in our pain, and in our sin? And just asking those questions, do you want to get better? Do you want to leave? Are really key. We work currently with a woman who's been involved five generations in sexual exploitation. She's in the bubble and doesn't know anything outside that. That's why it's crucial that we say there is a church there is a choice. You're not on a conveyor belt of destruction. Okay, so Betty says, right, I'd love to, you to have a rape alarm. These are ridiculous. Should I turn it on, actually? No, let's not, because it's so noisy. These are ridiculous. They're not particularly successful, but what they do communicate a very important message, that we think it's wrong. We think it's wrong that you're hit. Okay, it's wrong that men access you for violence and sex, and it's important to us that you grasp that it is wrong that you're hit. So we give you this, and we give you a Bible, the Message Bible. It's very approachable language. It's also very small, because often the women in NFA, which is no fixed abode, but they can keep that on their possession. This one, so I need glasses there. This is an old edition of Daily Bread, which is just user-friendly. And then we'll give Betty a leaflet, which explains when we're open, how often we're open, and where we are. And then Sandra gives Betty a cake. We, ha- we make so many cakes in Azania and give them out. One of the effects of being involved in drugs is there's a real need for sugar in the system. These are homemade, and the reason for that is we want to communicate they're an individual, and that somebody has individually made this cake for you because you matter to God. And we have a food bank, and we've chosen as a trust not, never to go to supermarkets and ask them for the food. Because we, we tell the women, this comes from a bunch of Christians from churches all over Luton and the surrounding areas, because we believe as Christians that you matter to God, so we're prepared to sacrifice stuff so we can help you to understand that you matter to God. And giving out the cakes is so good, and the women love it. They absolutely love it. We have birthday parties for the women, and most of them have never had a birthday party, had a birthday cake. Every time we do it, there's a surprise. I've never had a birthday party. This is really bizarre. So you have stories like that, and it gives you indications as to how they've been brought up and what's happened in their lives to bring them to the place where they're at. So my little speech would go on for hopefully 40 to 60 seconds. Why would it be so short? Any ideas? 
Okay, who's this guy here? Pimp. Okay, can I see him? Is Sandra aware of him? No. Sarah, are you aware of any danger? No. How about you, Betty? Are you aware of danger? Yeah. Because what's what are we doing to you when we're talking to you? Putting me in danger. Putting you in danger. So we can we can have a big speech, you know, and give you a three point sermon on the blood of Jesus, but we're putting Betty in in danger. So the best place for us to go is to go to the drop in. That's why we have it. And there we can then talk to Betty. But because we give out food, that means that pimps are kind of happy for the women to go because they get fed as well. And it gives us a really good place that we can really pray with the women and introduce exit strategies to their lives. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. There we go. Shall I take that? Yes. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sandra. That's beautiful. Um, in Azalea, we work really closely with the NHS and the police. Um, we're, part, we're part of a strategy forum, uh, and we share confidential information, particularly around child sexual exploitation in, in Luton. So I'd love you to see a clip now. This is the drop-in, and this is what the drop-in does and how it all works. Thank you. I hope that gives you a sort of an insight as to what happens in Azalea. We have 28 volunteers who have been through training and have ongoing support being involved with the women. As you can imagine, we meet really sad, difficult times. But I kind of believe that we're all broken. We just have different toys and that we all need the grace of God. Uh, I love reading. I love Mark Twain. And he says most of us are good because of lack of opportunity to be bad. And these women have had a huge amount of opportunities to be bad. Before we start outreach, we meet as a group and we pray for each other because as you can imagine, the, the situations that women face are very life-threatening, heartbreaking. If you can imagine one side of this church, this side, say, if we can look at all your different personal challenges, compress them, then you roughly have one woman involved in sexual exploitation. Their backgrounds are unbelievable. When we do reports for court or for housing or whatever it is, they often say, I think you've got a few people in here I don't know how many times that's happened to me, and I say, no, I haven't. This is generally one person's story. So it's quite hard what you meet, and it's quite unbelievable the, the depth of sadness that is in one person's life. But within that, God still cares for, hair, for us. I often think it's kind of bizarre, isn't it, that God knows the number of hairs on our heads. Of all the things you need to know in life, to know the number of hairs on your head is a bit over the top, isn't it? I think it is. It's a bit lavish. But God does because, he, because we matter to him. So we spend time praying for each other. And we don't try and sell ourselves well or put on a good image. We just are real. Because we encourage the women to be real and to be honest. It takes a lot of courage to come in that door. So who do we think we are to be able to minister to them if we can't even do it ourselves? We can't be honest. So we pray for each other. And each week we do this, the, the honesty level goes up and up and up. But the big rule is what's said in the room stays in the room. Okay, because often as Christians we're not very good at confidentiality, are we? And we just pray for each other, ask the Holy Spirit to come in and to bring comfort if that's what's required. But it's not always problem-based. Sometimes we just need, absolutely have a relentless need to thank God for stuff that's going on in our lives. And then we spend time listening to God about who we're going to meet out there, what is the potential challenges, who do we feel that God has laid on our hearts this week, who does he want us to pray for, what does he want us to do, and just to spend time listening to God. And sometimes those times can be really prophetic. We can have words of knowledge, stuff from the Bible, whatever it is. And sometimes it's just a sense that the peace of God is with us, which is awesome. Because you do not know when you go on outreach, when you're on the drop-in, what you're going to meet. It's such a different world out there. And then at the end of the evening, we come together and we ask ourselves, what was good about tonight? What was challenging about tonight? And what do I feel I'm still carrying? 
And often it can be few, a few days later, I can get phone calls from teams saying, I was involved in this trauma and it's still in my heart. Please pray. And that's exactly what we should be doing as team. And I really believe that we discover who we are as we reach out. And I pray for the team, which is a horrible prayer, I think. I pray that the team will be put in situations where they have to know how much they need God, that they can't do this without him. Because God's committed to us growing in him, isn't he? And that utter trust in him. Uh, our youngest volunteer is 24. 23. She used to be 19, as I think we can all say the same. Anybody here used to be 19? <laughs> That's good. That's good. The women still think Vicky's 19, which is good. They don't particularly get time and space. <laughs> and our oldest volunteer is 81. And that means that God can use everybody and anybody. Our team is incredibly diverse. We've worked really hard at having a diverse team because we all need each other to function. And the body of Christ is incredibly able to be itself if we're different. And that we don't collect people who are very, very similar. Because we need each other to function, don't we? So Vicky came to us at, at 19 years old. And it's been brilliant. Because in Azalea, we do have a lot of volunteers. But our passion is that we relate to the women as women. And we're relationship-based and not needs-based. Which is quite difficult when the women have all their relationships around sexual exploitation or around professionals who are involved. And they just don't know people from mainstream society. For, so for us, coming along as volunteers is absolutely crucial. It really is. Because we're saying that we're not being paid to be with you, but we're with you because we believe that God really loves you just as you are. Isn't that wonderful? And that we want to relate to you as that. So that's Vicky. Vicky's going off to do her DTS, which I know you all know. And then after that, um, it's going to be really involved in Azalea, which is incredibly exciting for us. An, incredi an incredible privilege. Unfortunately, there are many, many people who feel called to work in Azalea and to minister in Azalea, but not many people are really called to work with the women. And it's really difficult to find the right type of person. And I don't know how you describe that right per person because I've known people from very different walks of life being utterly suitable. Uh, but Vicky's one of those people, so we're incredibly privileged and excited, excited to, to have discovered her and to see how God's going to use her. In, in Azalea, we, we utterly support what is happening locally with our local MP. So if you can really pray for this, I really ask you to, to take this in your heart. We believe that the laws within the country should look at making it easier for women to leave sexual exploitation. So just now, it's a very complicated law, so I'm just going to simplify it. What we are planning to do is to decriminalize the women who are involved so they don't get fine upon fine, because otherwise they just work to pay off their fine. And the men who access the women for violence and sex will have a criminal record. So that sits very simplistically. So it's being pushed through Parliament. And if you can really pray for Gavin Shuka, because this week is a really significant week for him, um, and being able to, to kind of push this more into the system within Parliament to make it a bill. So please pray for that. And that's something that we're really involved with, with Azalea. Um, I mentioned at the very, very beginning that Isalia is involved around the world. We get contacted a lot about supporting projects because although we want to see women recover and come out of prostitution, the main focus of what we do is for them to know they matter to God and to change from the inside out. And it isn't about seeing women leave. It's about them find the deep love of God. And obviously, out of that, they'll then leave. So that's our massive prayer. Okay. Um, can we just finish with playing the Ed playing the Ed Sheeran song, and then I think we'll wrap up and pray for Vicky. What? Yeah. Yeah, that'd be cool. Would that be good now? Okay. Okay. That's super. Okay. Super, yes, yes, and okay. Um, do you have any questions about what Azalea does, what we do, what Vicky's going to be doing, and such like? Yes, 
yeah, it started in Luton. Um, it started, I think, six years ago. And I've been involved in four, four other projects that are very similar to Azalea around the, around the UK, um, starting them up. And then there's other projects around the world that I've been involved in consulting and supporting them to start up. So there are Christian projects that are in the UK which are not so directed around women exiting. They're more about handing out cakes and helping their life to be better in the place where it's at. But we're very much around recovery and transformation. Yeah, yeah. yeah the, the bill is to decriminalise women involved in sexualization, in, in sexual exploitation and to criminalise the men who access the women for violence and sex. That, that's it, in, in essence. The, the law is very grey and very complicated just now, um, but that's its simplistic form. And that's what we absolutely need to, to pray for. Okay, should we play the clip and then I'll talk about prayer within Azalea and, and how you can get involved in that. think without the power of God igniting all our good systems, our strategies will come down to nothing because it's only God that can bring spiritual change to people. So if anything, I'd love you to see Azalea as a prayer ministry rather than an action. So out of that, we have a prayer net where 177 women now are mentioned by name. Um, they all have pseudonyms, which is incredibly challenging to find enough pseudonyms. But we'd love you to have one, and we'll just pray in groups just now. That would be super. So if you can pass them round. See, so if you can gather into groups of about four or five, that would be brilliant. I think there's enough for each of you. If there's not, then... Uh, yeah, if you can take one each, that would be super. Before we go into groups, I just would love us to, to hear a little fraction of how God feels about the women through a, a Bible verse I've asked Sarah to read to us. Okay. Have you all got one or nearly got one? Okay. I like these pink ladies, not the apples, although I do like the apples, but it's another subject, because they're a silhouette of innocence, aren't they? Which is anything but the women's existence. Have you all got one? Okay, that's great. Right, Sarah. This is from Luke 7. Simon replied, I suppose the one who had the bigger debt forgiven. You have judged correctly, Jesus said. Then he turned towards the woman and said to Simon, Do you see this woman? I came into your house. You did not give me any water for my feet. But she wet my feet with her tears and wiped them with her hair. You did not give me a kiss, but this woman, from the time I entered, has not stopped kissing my feet. You did not put oil on my head, but she has poured perfume on my feet. Therefore, I tell you, her many sins have been forgiven, as her great love has shown. But whoever has been forgiven little loves little. Then Jesus said to her, Your sins are forgiven. The other guests began to say among themselves, Who is this who even forgives sins? And Jesus said to the woman, Your faith has saved you. Go in peace. Amen. Okay, I'll... Um, actually, it would probably be easier if you form groups of four, and then I'll pray, and then we'll pray in our little groups for about five minutes. So if you can, if you can, cha if you can turn your chairs round, it might be slightly logistically challenging. Yes. It may or may not be appropriate for you to, to answer this. But what I want to ask is, you've spoken very powerfully and really about the women, but what is, where would you, what would this alias say is the good news for the men, both the pimps Absolutely. and the users? Absolutely. Because clearly, we yeah. all believe that God loves them equally. Um, 
if you could say something about what Azalea's message is for them and any yeah. triggers of hope that you've had in your yeah. ministry all these years yeah. for them. Yeah, I will. I will. Yeah, that's great. Thank you. Okay, are you all in your groups? Okay, that's super. Um, when you pray for these women, I really encourage you to think about the men who are behind these women, if they're pimps, if they're the abusers, whatever ways God leads you in, because there is hope for all, isn't there? And in Azalea, we, we've been asked, I think it's six times now, by the police to form a team that will work with the men that they arrest to do with sexual exploitation, and we haven't got the resources to do that. Um, we urgently need an operations director who will kind of help us to, to build the right systems to make that happen. So we're urgently kind of fundraising for that just now. But we desperately want to look at the, and I mean that desperately, want to look at the issues around men who are involved in the whole machinery of sexual exploitation to girls and to women. And also, wouldn't it be great if we could look at what happens within the, within the rent boy scene within Luton, which is vast, as you could imagine. I'll lead us in prayer, and then if you can pray in your smaller groups, and just spend time listening to God and asking him how he would like you to pray. Okay. Father, we thank you so much for the power of your Holy Spirit, and we thank you there is no one who is outside the grace of God. There is no one who cannot be touched by you. I thank you that we're all capable of monstrous things outside your, your grace and your calling. And I thank you that you love to give us a gift of prayer to teach us how to pray. And Lord, we just come to you as equal vessels, knowing that we can hear from you and pray for people we do not know. And Lord, we just get very excited about heaven, about meeting some of the people we pray for that we will never meet uh, at this side of heaven. And that we will see so many answers to prayer. Lord, just lead us and teach us how to recognize your voice and to listen to you. And we thank you also that the issues that we've come to church with today matter to you, Lord. Thank you, Father God. Amen. Okay, thank you so much for praying. I really encourage you this week to ask God um, if he can wake you up in the night. Don't, don't quote me on that, please. Um, and pray for, for that particular woman because it is about individual support and what you do for them in this capacity will change their lives. And you're joining with Jesus who forever intercedes for us. So I really encourage you to pray, to fast, and when you wake up in the middle of the night, ask the Lord, as Samuel did, what do you want to say to me? I'm here, Lord. How do you want me to pray for this particular woman? And I keep on banging on about it, but prayer is the most important thing you'll ever do with your life. So please understand the significance of that. Perhaps not many of us will end up going out, but all of us can pray. And that's the most important aspect of Azalea. So thank you so much.